Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another Nacho Tuesday. And today I have Roland here uh, with Arrow.ai, uh, Arrow AI. And uh, we'd like uh, if you could introduce his product really quickly for us and uh, tell us a little bit more about what he does. Yeah, thanks for having me on. It's great to be here, Andy. I really appreciate it. My name is Roland Reichel. I'm the CEO and founder of Arrow AI. And the value proposition is really straightforward. Like, look, if you're not posting on social media, your business profiles every day, it's kind of like you don't exist. Um, but it's super time consuming. So Arrow automates that. It's uh, artificial intelligence plus a team of social media uh, experts to uh, post on your behalf every day, making great content for you. So uh, you can go out there and focus on your business. That's always important. Um, can you tell us more about how, how you got to where you're at in your career? Like what, what made you uh, want to start this company? And uh, tell us a little bit more about your background. Yeah, absolutely. So um, my first entrepreneurial experience was in the ninth grade. I used to skateboard to school from my house. I'd take the bus and skate the last like two miles to school. And I'd stop by a donut shop every day and I'd buy 12 donuts um, for like eight bucks and I'd sell them for um, two bucks a pop. So uh, that was my first uh, first money making experience. And that'd give me enough money every day for, for the week in high school. Um, after that, I went on into um, brand management. I used to run the Corona brands here in California. So as a brand manager and kind of all things marketing and then made my way into digital marketing and had a career selling technology to big companies like Disney and Microsoft and managing hundreds of millions of dollars in budget. And um, which is great, uh, really exciting, fun work. Um, but my passion has always been small business owners. Maybe it goes back to that experience selling donuts in high school, but uh, that's really been my passion. And so when I exited my last company, I went all in on the small business community. Mm -hmm. And uh, this one specifically focused on social media, I guess. What uh, social media trends do you see happening today? And uh, how does AI potentially play into this? Yeah, I think it's really interesting. So it's kind of come full circle from my perspective. Like it started off with content. If you think about the web in general, it's just about content, right? You put up yeah. a website, make some cool content, people come check you out. And then they started selling ads on those websites. And then it became like this fully digital, um, real-time data-driven process, right? Where, you mm -hmm. know, you can buy media in, in, in milliseconds and identify users and all that. And I think it's circled all the way back now where it's just about content. And, mm -hmm. you know, we forget that millions of businesses use social media platforms like Facebook and Instagram every day for local discovery, right? To book mm -hmm. that next job, to get that next, you know, hot water heater job or whatever it is that they do. And, um, you know, it's, it's for these local businesses, they have to put content out there. So I think we've really come full circle. I mean, there still is sort of a big brand data driven media buying mm -hmm. ecosystem that's billions, hundreds of billions of dollars. But on the other part of this ecosystem is small businesses posting every day. Hey, this is what I do. This is what I sell. Um, and so it's kind of formed into two, two ecosystems. Yeah. So what, what, I guess what kind of tips would you offer an SMB owner to get some initial success going from social media? Because there's nothing more disheartening than uh, starting a program and not seeing, you know, amazing overnight results, <laughs> which, you know, it takes time, of course. Uh, what would you recommend to these people? Yeah, I think you hit on it there, Andy, about amazing overnight results. Um, it doesn't necessarily work that way. I mean, um, you know, a lot of times when you see these, you know, um, what do you want to call them? Influencers or people who are really successful. So yeah, they have a whole team behind them, right? Like you look just off the camera and there's like a makeup artist and music and all of this. But for, for small business owners that are relying on a tool like Arrow, and Arrow is a great choice for these small business owners. It's affordable. It's effective. We have a plan that's $29 a month and we'll post content for you. So, you know, what's great about it is it'll get you in the game. And so I give two tips to the small business owners. Use a tool like Arrow. If it's not Arrow, pick another one, but I think Arrow is the right one. And the second one is just start posting. And even though you might not see the results immediately, it's no, you know, it's no lever you can pull and then the pickup truck full of cash, you know, is going to back up on your company. But, but stick with it, post every day, even simple things, a couple quotes, a business quote, something inspirational you know, try not to overthink it too much. Don't get hung up on, oh, I need a cold calendar. I need this. I need that. No, just post every day. And I'm guarantee, I guarantee, and we see this from a statistical perspective that daily posting over the course of three, three months, four months, you will see an impact on your business, better reach, better visibility, more business. Yep. 
And uh, I guess, can you give some examples of maybe some companies that are doing it right? Maybe some of your customers, um, SMB clients that, you know, started from nothing and kind of got a social media program going? Yeah, there's two I can think of. Um, and the reason I think of them is one sent us an email this morning. Um, she just signed up for Arrow yesterday. She has nice. a coaching and wellness business. Yep, her name's Valerie. Um, it's called Value. And uh, she has not posted on LinkedIn in over a year and a half. Signed up for Arrow. Arrow created some really wow. great posts, posted for very first post out. Um, she had over 200 engagements, 10 likes, comments, and shares. Uh, on a page that had had zero engagement in in months and months and months. So wow. she was feeling really good about that. And, and we're really excited for her to start to get her name out there on, on LinkedIn. Uh, another example is a company called The Louver Shop. They've seen about a 400% increase in engagement across their 43 locations. They have 43 stores all using Arrow to post content every day. So a 300% increase in engagement across 43 stores. That's a nice little chunk of change to be able to go back at the end of the year and know that you've increased your business using Arrow. That's a great point. Yeah, I would love to dive in deeper into uh, learning about how your product works. If you could kind of walk us through the steps uh, for you know how somebody would initially use Arrow.ai and what it uh, what it does uh, for their business. Yeah, so I think we're a really interesting company because we're we're mostly an AI company, but we do have uh, social media experts who work here as well. And let me tell you why we do that because your social media. Uh, posts have to be perfect. You're going out in the world. They're like an extension of you and your profession, your business, right? And yeah. so you just can't like, hey, here's a post and maybe it's okay. It's got to really be perfect. So we find that that having humans in the loop to kind of do that last mile to make sure your social media posts are absolutely perfect is really critical. So how do you use Arrow? You sign up on the website. You go through a couple onboarding screens. Do an onboarding call. It takes about 10 minutes and it'll really fine tune. And then within 24 hours, Arrow starts posting for you. And, um, you know, the last thing I'll say is we're kind of the anti-platform platform. platform. Um, yep. Yeah, we have a platform, but you don't need to log into it. You know, you can just email your, your account manager. You can text us. We've got a chat bot. You can uh, upload pictures and say like, hey, here's a job I did today. Can you post about this? We'll take that in and Arrow will start posting. So we're really going completely like off the off the SaaS rails, if you will, yeah. and, and meeting users exactly where they are in their cars and in their businesses and, and, and in their mobile phones so that they can interact with Arrow in a conversational easy to use way um, and get the, that content uh, posted for them. Do you have any tips for how, uh, how people can make their content stand out and break through the noise? Yeah, there's a bunch. I mean, I think the, the most important one is be authentic, right? Like yeah. just be real, you know, find some element of, of your business, your life that you want to tell your brand story, even some things like, hey, I started this business 15 years ago, or this business was started by my parents 15 years ago, and I'm second generation. Mm -hmm. And I think every business has a little bit of a story to tell. So that's one. Be authentic. Be real. The other thing I say to folks is like push your comfort zone a little bit. Yep. You know, it's social media. So don't don't feel like, um, you know, you can have a little fun. It, that's yeah. the purpose of it. Right. Be professional. But but feel free to let your personality come through a little bit yep. um, and use a service. I mean, I think Arrow is obviously a fantastic service. Uh, piece of technology. It's AI powered. So you're bringing AI right into your business. Um, but there's a, it's incredibly powerful and affordable and, and something like that, you know, quite frankly, can handle a lot of this work for you around posting. So you can focus on other parts of your business. That's a great point. I guess what social media platform are a lot of small business owners ignoring right now, but they should be paying attention to? Ooh, great question. Well, I think Pinterest has always been a little bit underrated. Yep. Uh, <laughs> It's a great platform. It's got 380 million daily, uh, not daily, but monthly users. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of people there. And it's a great way, especially of a product that you want to get out there. Um, Facebook and Instagram remain to be the most important platforms. Um, and then another one that people forget a lot about is your Google business profile. So you can actually post content to your, your Google business profile. And, and, the, and the benefit of that, Andy, is that it helps with your local SEO. So um, there's a lot of platforms to keep track of out of there. You know, you got to hit the major ones, but don't forget about your Google business profile because that can have an immediate impact on your business. Yeah, especially for like a local restaurant or your, your business is hyper local. Local, It's very important. Discoverability is everything. And, you know, I need to tell you about how these customer yeah. journeys go, right? I mean, you yep. really have like, you know, 
a few seconds on your phone, you're making a choice about whether you go and get um, ice cream cone here or ice cream cone there. And if you're in, you know, you got a strong profile, then you're going to win that customer. Yep. Yeah. If you show up at the top and, or people have seen it before, they're like, Oh, I've heard of your company before. <laughs> yeah. I heard of your company before, or you posted recently. So they know you're in business. I mean, we're still living in this like post COVID times where people are like, wait, are they still there? Are they still yeah. in business? Where, what's going on with them? You know? So I think now more than ever, it's important to get some posts out there. Hey, we're in business. We're rock and roll. And we've got the best ice cream here in, in Oakland or Toledo or Cincinnati or wherever your city is. Yep. And, and, you know, and you can really win a lot of customers that way. Yeah, that's a good point. I've made a decision decisions based on that. So I've seen, you know, I've gone to their social media profiles and they haven't posted in like three, six months. And I think they're probably closed. I've actually made a decision not to go there just because I didn't want to risk you know, my time and my time to go out of my way to a business that might not even be operating anymore. Yeah, I think that's right. Um, and, and that's, I think, one of the main things that these social media profiles do nowadays. It's just that instant mm -hmm. credibility. It lets people know, hey, I'm here and I'm in business. Um, so, yeah, well, you're not alone, Andy. A lot of people are making decisions based on what they're reading on their phone every day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we spend too much time on our phones, too. <laughs> sure do. Um, I've been doing this thing called grayscale lately, which is kind of cool. I put mm -hmm. my phone, I took the color out of my phone. Oh, that's going to have a nice psychological effect to it. <laughs> yeah, it's supposed to kind of help uh, mm -hmm. you you, um, uh, you not pay quite as much attention to your phone. Yeah, I make sure to turn off my notifications, too, so I don't, I, I don't hear any notifications because, you know, I'm ADHD as well, so if I heard... You know, the ding, ding, ding going all day would just drive me nuts. <laughs> I'd never get anything done. It, it totally makes sense. And look, I, I think it's really reasonable to have this conversation about like, what yeah. should we be spending our time on, right? Like social yeah. media is here to stay. It's become a really important part of our business, become yeah. fabric of our culture, or society. I mean, and this is global, mm -hmm. right? Not just in the US. I mean, two and a half billion yeah. people using, using Meta alone, right? So this is very much a, a part of our lives. But I think what's happening with sort of this AI you know, evolution that we're having yeah. right now. People are starting to think about like, hey, how do I want to spend my time? You know, what can I plug something like Arrow in that can take care of some of this relatively important but relatively low value content for me so I can focus yeah. on things that are like really high value, high touch, like, yeah. you know, reaching out to a new customer. So I think that's what's really exciting. I mean, look, yeah. there's no doubt like for small businesses, they have just more tools than ever before. And I think we're about to even have another huge jump in the kinds of time-saving tools that small business owners can use. Yep. Yeah, it's a, like Pareto principle. You know, put put the twenty percent of your time where it means the most, where you, you get that authenticity across, or you're spending time with your customers. Those type of activities. Whereas, you know, there's a lot of things that you could just automate uh, that AI is really useful for. It's not like a full replacement, but it could do a lot of the heavy lifting for you. And that's that's where I've seen the most successful applications. You know, same with your guys's platform. Uh, the ability yeah. to automate some of the mundane things. Yeah, I think that's right. And, you know, we're keeping a close eye on this. I mean, we we know that the output of Arrow has to be perfect because it's your reputation. It's your company. It's your business out there. And we, we yeah. respect that. We love that. I mean, we, we take that that um, charge very seriously. And, you know, and that's really why we still have, you know, social media experts looking at every yeah, post. I love that. Make sure, you know, because you, you need that human touch at the end of the day. And what's really cool is like our social media experts get to know their businesses. Like they know, you know, it, it's amazing. Like I know about businesses in different parts of the country just because I see their social, I'm like in tune yeah. with their business and what they want to say online because <laughs> I see their account. Yeah. So we, we're, we're keeping a close eye on this. You know, we're, we're like 80 to 85 percent mm -hmm. AI. And we think that'll get to 95 and, and above mm -hmm. percent over the next 12 months. But we're doing that thoughtfully. You know, Andy, we're doing that responsibly and making sure that that this automation really works for people and, and is yeah. highly effective. It's a really smart approach. I appreciate that about your guys' uh, way of going about business. I totally agree. Yeah, a lot of people just say they could just throw AI at it, but uh, it's still good to have that human in the loop uh, there to to ensure the quality and everything's there. Um, yeah, I mean, some of these AI tools are they're cool and they're fun to play with, but it's not yeah. like you're going to put your your business in their hands, right? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> we automate everything. No, wait, we don't want all that. <laughs> um, I guess what, what are some great uh, new B2B uh, channels that people are ignoring these days? You know, TikTok was one that we recently just started on ourselves. Uh, what are your thoughts on, you know, you mentioned Pinterest earlier. Any other thoughts on some good social media channels that might be overlooked for B2B companies specifically? 
Yeah, it's a, it's a great point. You know, I, I do think we're at a point where there's like a certain level of maturity in the social media space. Like we have our platforms out there and we kind of know what they are. I mean, TikTok being one of the newcomers, but obviously is really important. You know, I'll, I'll say that um, sometimes people forget about their personal profiles on LinkedIn. So let's say, you know, you, you have a company, you're, a, uh, I don't know, a business consultant or a business coach yeah. in a particular area. You've got a, a LinkedIn profile for your business, and that's really important. But you also have your own LinkedIn profile. And people will visit that as well to get yeah. to know, like, what your professional values are. And I think it's yeah. it's fair game, right? Like, people kind of want to know, hey, who am I doing business with? What are their values? What are my values? And how do they align? And people use social media for that. So I tell business owners, focus on your LinkedIn business account, but don't forget about your personal profile. Post there as well. And, um, you know, don't be afraid to post about things that you care about, right? Like for me, you know, climate crisis is important to me just on a personal level. So I'll post about that on my LinkedIn page. If I find a cool article or interesting piece of technology, I'll post about it. And it's a way for me to sort of communicate my values, um, professional yeah. values out to, the, out to the universe. That's a great point because I've seen a lot of owners that aren't as good at, at pre presenting themselves, you know, through social networks, especially even LinkedIn. You know, I, I'd say that there's a lot of... Um, here in New York City, where I'm at, a lot of restaurant owners are kind of the persona for their brand, if you will. It could even be a small mom and pop. But one of the reasons why they're so successful is the owner is so actively engaged in the community. And they even have their social media profiles fully dialed in, posting content and, you know, talking through those to their audience. Right. And there's been many situations where I go to go to their profiles and a lot of the, you know, New York does it really good, but a lot of other uh, SMB owners in a lot of other cities are very, you know, they're not they're not on LinkedIn. They're not building out their professional profiles. Uh, they're kind of operating behind the business instead of in front of the business. Yeah, it, it's an excellent point. And we see the same dynamics in the startup community. Like this is my third startup. Mm -hmm. And I, I know for sure that in the first couple of years of the startup, the founders mm -hmm. carry the business. It's our brand. It's our reputation mm -hmm. that carries business because people might not know might know us but they don't know our company why we built it what it does what the purpose of it is right it takes a couple years to, yeah. to establish the company so you're right and and i think for startup founders you know they they they're um they're kind of how they their their personal brand if you want to call it that is yeah. absolutely critical so and the restaurant community is a great example of that as well yeah i mean yeah live celebrity chefs right yep <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah the prices are double when you get half the food <laughs> i love them though <laughs> but yeah um, but, you feel, but you feel super cool doing it so maybe it's worth it oh the experience is what you're paying for really so like I, i'll pay that all day long because like they've dialed in that experience and you know that when you when you walk in those doors it just feels different you know yeah completely completely well we have our share of great food here in the bay area and, and oh, wonderful yep. restaurants too yeah i've so. been there before <laughs> yeah um, I would say, yeah, there in New York are, are really up there. I, I've been to some other cities, unfortunately, that didn't have so much. But, yeah, San Francisco's got a pretty good scene. Yeah, yeah, we've got a great food scene. But, you know, I feel like food's just been kind of popping up everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I was in, in Portland, Oregon recently, and they got great, great pubs, yeah. great beer, great local food there as well. So, you know, I think uh, – it's like anything else, you know, people want, people care about their local community. They want to buy local. They want to eat local. They want to shop local. I mean, a lot of those things that, that kind of yeah. came out of the COVID times are still, mm -hmm. still with us, which is, I think is quite positive. And, you know, I kind agree. of tied back to this whole conversation we're having about like being a member of your community, you know, being out there, having a profile and, yeah. you know, commenting on things and liking things. Um, that was another thing I was going to say now that we're kind of freewheeling a little bit here mm -hmm. is. Um, a great way to be on social media is just yeah. go like things. Yeah. It's a good start. Like if you feel like, oh, I don't know where to get started or like, I don't know what to post, just cruise through their feed, find five or six things that you think are cool, like, reply, yeah. comment. And it's a way to just kind of get into the conversation. Yeah. Yeah. I've noticed that from, from a lot of people. I mean, I notice when people comment on my posts and, you know, if they're consistent there, I'm like, I, I got to get to know this person or what's this person about? You know, you check out their profile and realize, hey, you know, maybe we should be doing business with this person. A hundred percent. And it, it's um, it's it's a nice thing. I mean, I noticed it, too. And someone likes one of my comments. Yep. <laughs> we all do. It's a, it's human nature. Right. It's it's like recognition. So it's a great way to, I think, kick off a relationship with someone quite frankly, I think it's better than some of the messaging and kind of blind messaging that happens. Yeah. Uh, you know, look, nothing wrong with cold messaging. I mean, it's a part, yeah. it's been a part of our sales process for a couple yeah. hundred years. Right. So I get it. There's, there's no shame there, but um, 
I do think that, uh, you know, liking someone or responding to a comment they made is a really organic way to kick off the conversation um, in the same way you would if you meet yeah. someone for the first time. You're not you selling know. them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Same idea. Yeah, you're just trying to find a common ground, I guess. Um, yeah, and the comments and joining this, the discussion allows you to do that. Where If they, you know, just start getting automated, you know, LinkedIn messages from me, and they, they feel like they're just a sales contact, <laughs> kind of, you know, definitely turns people off, so... Yeah, I think we're, we're, we're sensitive to that. I mean, it's another reason why, you know, we, we created Arrow is, you know, I, I came out of the advertising industry. So I've been spent a big part of my career, you know, making ads, selling ads, yeah. building ads, targeting ads, audience, demographics, big technology, yeah. big data, AI, the better target ads, all of that. Yeah. So I'm really familiar with that. And, you know, with Arrow, we just got back to basics. We're like, yeah. hey, let's just, you know make some cool posts and help people out a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love that. I love your guys' focus on SMB too. Um, yeah. Cause there's a, a there's a huge un, untapped uh, need for these SMB companies that I think a lot of companies just skip over. They want to go upstream to the enterprise companies, but there's mm -hmm. a ton of SMB companies out there in a huge market. And for solving a pain point like this, it's, you know, it's a massive need because a lot of these small business owners, I mean, like we just brought up the, the pizza restaurant guy, you know, in little Italy here, uh, he's busy cooking. He's, he's, you know, doing, doing the marketing, the accounting, like he's wearing a ton of hats. He doesn't have all the time in the world for social media. So, you know, having a tool like this to kind of help, you know, do some of that lifting for him, you know, makes a profound difference. And there's a lot of companies that need that. Yeah. It's, it's such a great point. Um, you know, I'm not a big fan of using numbers to tell a story, but I think in this situation, it does kind of make sense. So there's two, two um, numbers that I think are really impactful. So one is in micro businesses. These are companies of five people or less, Andy, that were started for less than 50K. So that's micro businesses. 41 million Americans, $9 trillion in economic activity. Wow. And to give you an example, like I think that the Fortune... Um, 1,000, mm -hmm. like 13 trillion, right? So yeah. it's, it's up there 40, but it's more people. It's 41 million yeah. Americans. Um, and then the other one is in 2027, you're going to see a shift where there's more freelancers than there are mm -hmm. W2 employees in America. Yeah, so there's more that. people working in the gig and freelance economy than in, in, in W2 employment. So, you know, the landscapes just changed absolutely radically. I mean, people, and if you're a freelancer, it's like you, you have, all you have is your personal mm -hmm. brand, right? So um, to your point about this SMB community, it's not, it's massive, it's growing, it's complicated. And we really, I think, do a good job of, of the solopreneurs, especially it's yeah. another big market, um, that we focus on. So that's business Great. coaches and CPAs and professional services, home services, contractors, general contractors. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, that's a great point, actually. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> we just recently partnered with a company called Fractionals United. Uh, mm -hmm. So they're working to uh, help, you know, uh, uh, executive leaders, I guess, place within companies. But uh, there's been a huge growth in like fractional executive roles as well, too, to kind of complement what's going on in the freelancer growth. Yeah, the fractional uh, executive role uh, space is massive. Um, you know, people just want to work, work differently. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah, it makes perfect sense. Exciting times are in. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I guess what challenges did you guys face as a company in, in, in the early stages and how did, how do you guys overcome those? Yeah, well, we faced every challenge possible and we're still facing a lot of them today. <laughs> <Start of life. laughs> um, I mean, look, we're, we're a swashbuckling group of pirates hanging by a thread, you know, carving our... <laughs> Been there know, for 20 years. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> carving our swath, swath across the ocean with, you know, one, one sail in the water and the sword flying out and trying to, you know... Um, keep, keep, keep everything going forward. No, you know, look, it's it, it, starting a business is, is always an incredible opportunity and incredibly exciting. Um, the technology is really our focus. So I think that's our core competency is building tech, but you know, the biggest challenge we had was just getting started in, in COVID. Like we launched the company in January of 2020 and then like, boom, like right away, three months later, you know, the, the whole country went into a shutdown. So yeah. We were building as a remote. We, we we had the idea to build as a remote business from the beginning, distributed company. Mm -hmm. But you know, we just had no choice. So how, yeah. you know, building culture remotely, um, building product remotely, mm -hmm. uh, creating you know internal feedback loops that we needed. I mean, those were really 
really hard to do. And I think as a, as a team, we, we spent a lot of time working on that to, um, and even now we're trying to do that. I mean, we had a meeting this morning about with, with, with one of the co-founders, Jason, like, hey, we need more feedback from our users, right? Like that's cold. We need to know what they're thinking, whether we reach out to them or call them or email them or whatever. Because um, when you're a product-led company, you need that feedback loop. So I think that's been uh, our biggest challenge and we're still, yeah, just working through it. Yeah. And whether it's good or bad too, because <laughs> uh, yeah, even the bad stuff gives you uh, good ideas to, to uh, new directions that you could take or how you can improve the experience overall. Yeah, a hundred percent. And it, I, I think that's absolutely correct. And um, yeah, it's uh, we, we love people who aren't shy. <laughs> yep. <laughs> what, what do you recommend, I guess, for, uh, for executives and leaders that come across problems and challenges and you know, might even fail. How, how, how do you, how should they go about overcoming that situation and moving on from it? Yeah. So I think uh, th there's, there's two things I'll say to anyone thinking about either starting a business and specifically a startup. Um, mm -hmm. So one is to find success very early on, right? Very few companies go public. So if your idea is like, Hey, we're going to IPO in seven years, you know, you got to be a hundred percent focused on that. You look at the yeah. companies that, that do IPO, they were, that's all they wanted from the beginning. I mean, the founding team was like, we are going to IPO and they, and every choice they made in advisors, in VCs, in how to fund the company, in how much equity to give away. I mean, every single choice they made along the way was focused on that one outcome, which is IPO. So if that's your outcome, you got to be just relentlessly focused on it. Now, if you've got other outcomes and trust me, I mean, there's some great other outcomes. You could sell your business. Yeah. You could create a business that has great cash flow and you're really happy and, you know, you can reinvest that money. So there's lots of other outcomes. So just be really clear up front about what you want to achieve because that'll help you make the right decisions. Um, and, and just remember, there's lots of pathways. And then the second thing I say to anyone is, you know, just support system, right? Like go in with open eyes. You got to let your wife know, your kids know, your friends know, like, hey, this is a startup. You know, this it's, is like, hours. <laughs> it's going to be a lot of hours. It's going to be a lot of time. And, you know, it's going to be a bumpy road. But, um, you know, I think if you go in with open eyes on those two things, you'll, you'll, you'll help yourself a lot. That's a good point. It's good to have a, yeah, that vision and then look at every, you know, don't just get so focus on the vision that you forget each and every step in front of you. Uh, some people are just looking at one step or the next and they forget the vision. Other people have a vision, but they don't take the small itty bitty steps that it takes to get there. And to your point, um, having it, every decision is very calculated, right? The, the, the right advisors coming into your company, the right type of employees that you build, uh, build into your team. All those decisions are very important, but it all, it all starts with vision and then the itty bitty steps you take along the way from there. Yeah, hundred percent. And, and to hold on to that vision and just know what you want to achieve, right? Like not everyone's going to, I was part of a public markets strategy. We took company public back in 2018, my previous company. And, you know, I, I went through that experience. I mean, it was, uh, you know, Toronto venture stock exchange. So it's, mm -hmm. you know, a little bit different, but still, I mean, we took the company public. So yeah. you know, I know what that experience is like. And, you know, it's, 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 again, there's not many companies that do it, um, mm -hmm. you know, but and it can be incredibly rewarding, but it's not for everyone. So just be upfront. And, and look, there's a lot of VCs that and other folks who like to invest in companies that are like, hey, we're going to be a $300 million a year company or we're going to exit, mm -hmm. you know, for, for this kind of valuation. And you just got to find the right investors and yeah. folks who want to back that vision. Yeah. And some people, you know, some people just, it's good to have a good lifestyle business too, right? Like you said, uh, sometimes just to get some good cash flow coming in, maybe you can even get it to a point to where it's kind of running on its own. And I've seen this for a lot of friends too. They'll start another business and then they'll get another business going and they're all just cash flowing, you know, money in, uh, you yeah. know, they're not going IPO, but they don't need to, they don't plan to. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And nowadays you can work from anywhere. So, I mean, you can, you know, you can be uh, sitting on the Jersey Shore in your board shorts, you know, running your business. You could be in New York City. You could be in California. You could be in Bali. You could be in Paris. I mean, yeah. you know, so um, I, it's, it's a it's a it's a great way. I think a lot of entrepreneurs are thinking about that nowadays. And um, you know where I think is actually an underestimated platform since we're talking about entrepreneurs. Yeah. Reddit. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Reddit. <laughs> And that's a community you gotta you gotta figure out how to work with it. Otherwise, they'll beat you out real quick. <laughs> they'll, they'll, you gotta, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's it's a little bit um, swampy, I guess is maybe the right word. But yeah, it's, it, but 
there's a lot of people there and a lot of entrepreneurs. And I've actually, mm -hmm. and I think because Reddit's one of the last places on the internet, you can be anonymous, right? Like mm -hmm. Facebook, you can't be anonymous, Instagram, you know, right? Which is fine and good and probably healthy. But it is one of the last anonymous places. So you you see people telling real stories, especially entrepreneurs, about how they took their company from zero to a two million in revenue and like they yeah. give it the inside inside dope, inside scoop. So yeah. um there's some great channels in there. Everyone just ping me on LinkedIn or find me at you know get arrow.ai um or shoot me an email or DM me and uh, I'll share some of my favorite uh, Reddit channels with you. I really appreciate that, Rowan. And uh, once again, I really appreciate you coming on today. And uh, looks like there's some exciting times ahead for you guys' this company. And we look forward to our growing partnership together. And uh, anybody interested in uh, uh, Arrow AI's uh, ability to kind of help doing some of the, the heavy lifting for you with your social media to make sure that your content marketing strategy is, is uh, on track, uh, feel free to check them out today in the B2B SaaS marketplace. Uh, you can find them on nachonacho.com, uh, the plus, the best place to buy SaaS. And you can also go check out Roland's website and uh, learn more about his company. Um, and he just gave his personal information. So uh, don't be shy. Just uh, reach out to him and uh, ask him any questions that you might have. <laughs> yeah. Andy, thank you so much. We're really excited about our partnership with Nacho Nacho. Um, the founding team is fantastic. The marketing team. And it, it's a great idea. It's a great product. I mean, more and more companies need these kinds of SaaS tools. So, yeah, please check us out at uh, Nacho Nacho. Uh, dot com and and if you're thinking about arrow please uh please hook us up there great thanks ron thank you